In this demonstration, we'll introduce you to the Configure Pop-Ups pane. All right, so if you want to create custom pop-up content, uh, the way that you're going to initiate that process um, is to find the layer that you want to do the configuration on and then right click on it in the contents pane and select configure pop-ups. What that'll do is display the configure pop-ups pane. <clears throat> I've already been working on this uh, pop-up pane so there's some content here that uh, wouldn't normally vis be visible. Uh, typically what you would see when you first bring up the configure pop-ups pane is something that looks like this. And uh, so what you have across the top of the configure pop-ups pane are a number of different buttons that will allow you to insert various um, content elements. So there's a button for text, for fields, for image, for chart, and for carousel. <clears throat> so um, the way that you would introduce or insert a new piece of uh, a new element uh, would simply be to uh, click on that uh, element. For, so for the, this example, I clicked on text and you'll notice that it added a new uh, text element to the content pane. And then from there, you're gonna to have to do your configuration. Uh, but as you click these individual uh, buttons, you'll notice that they add um, element items uh, to the content area. Now, once you've got the items in the content area, uh, of course, you can config configure those elements. Uh, one thing you may wanna do is change the ordering, and you can do that uh, simply by selecting an element, by clicking it with your mouse, and then dragging it to a new location. So for example, if I wanted to take the chart and pull that up to the top, I could simply drag it uh, and drop it uh, to, the, to the top. Now you'll notice that each of these elements has a little pencil icon uh, that will allow you to uh, edit the pop-up element. So for example, uh, for fields, if I click on the pencil icon, that will bring up a, um, the fields option allows me to further configure the fields for this particular element. And the default here is gonna be only to use visible fields and arcade expressions. You can also turn that off and then select these individual fields <clears throat> as needed. In future demonstrations, we'll go through uh, some of the detailed configuration steps for each of these elements. So we'll save the, the detailed discussion of these uh, elements uh, for a later demonstration. Right now, we just wanna kinda of highlight the primary elements that you're gonna see on that configure pop-ups pane. Now you'll notice down below that the primary set of buttons is a second row of buttons that allow you to do some additional configuration. So one thing you might want to do is to split uh, your, your elements. And uh, there's a couple ways you can do that. One would be to split into two horizontally stacked elements. And you'll notice I've already selected uh, an element here. So if I click the horizontal stacking, you'll notice that what it does is it divides it into essentially two columns for that particular text element. <clears throat> now I can undo that if I want and instead I might want to change that to vertically and you'll notice it adds a second vertical element here by clicking on the split into two vertically stacked elements. So uh, you can either stack them uh, horizontally or vertically uh, as needed. <clears throat> now if you've got an element that contains uh, or a row that contains multiple elements, so you'll see in this particular row has two text elements. Uh, when that becomes the case, you'll get uh, some additional horizontal arrangement proportions that you can select uh, by looking at the dropdown. Now, this little dropdown will allow you to essentially resize or reproportion um, each of the individual um, content elements that has been added to that particular row. So, for example, if I select uh, 33 and, and 66, uh, 33.33 and 66.67, you'll notice that it changes. Uh, the uh, the proportional size of each of those elements. So it allows you to further configure uh, an individual row of elements when you have more than one element that's been added to a row. Other things you can do here include, um, you know, adding border sizes. So this allows you to add borders to your individual elements, and then you can also change the color of those elements as well. Now down at the bottom, you have buttons for disabling, what that'll do is remove the pop-up configuration for the layer. Probably not something you typically do, but you know there may be certain situations where you need to remove the configuration for the layer, the pop-up configuration for the layer, and that's the button you would click to do that. There's also an expressions button you can click, and what this will do is initiate uh, the ability to create an arcade expression in the pop-up. We'll do some later demonstrations that go into more detail on adding arcade expressions uh, to your pop-up content. So. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail in this demonstration on this expressions button, but when you click it, essentially what it does is it provides you with an expressions pane. 
And any pre-existing expressions that you've already created, again, these are arcade expressions, are going to show up <clears throat> at the top. So right now I have one expression that I've created in the past. I want to edit it. Uh, I click the pencil icon, and then I can go into my expression builder, which allows me to build my arcade expression, make changes to it if needed. And again, I'll be going over this in more detail in a later uh, demonstration, later portion of this class. So we'll save that, uh, that for later. <clears throat> now, if you want to create a new expression, you simply click on the new button and that initiates uh, the expression builder as well. And then you can uh, build your arcade expression from scratch uh, at that point. But as I said, I'll go into this in more detail on a, uh, in a future demonstration uh, that deal, deals more in detail with, with arcade expressions and how you can go about creating those. All right, now you can also reset this as well. So there's a reset button that'll reset the configuration back to the original state. So that's typically when you first bring up the configure pop-ups window for a layer, this would be the state that you would see, right? So it automatically adds a fields content item. Uh, and then it, of course, you're also gonna get a title as well. We haven't really talked about the title yet, but the title <clears throat> allows you to insert uh, both static and dynamic text for your title as well as field content. So in this case, this owner name knows how it's surrounded by curly braces. Basically what we're doing here is we're pulling information from the owner name field. And right? anytime you select uh, one of these fields, for example, if I select legal description, you'll notice that it adds uh, an identifier for that field inside of curly braces. And those curly braces are basically just um, an insertion point for some text that will be inserted. So that's essentially a piece of dynamic text that will be inserted here uh, for your title. And uh, now you can also make other changes here as well. You can change uh, change your font, font size, and there's some other options that you can set here as well. But all these are gonna be used to control your, your title specifically. All right, that's it for now. Uh, thank you for joining me.